What's up everyone? In this video, I am drawing an object called the Damned Fountain for the Mystic Punks RPG adventure Crackdown at Ivy Park. It's a vertical subject set in a horizontal canvas. My solution is to put the camera up high so we're looking down on the fountain. This compresses the vertical aspect of the subject so it fits more easily into the horizontal frame without compromising too much the sense of how tall the object is supposed to be. Benjamin Mara here, illustrator and cartoonist. Welcome to my channel where I record my process and give insights about art projects I'm working on with the hope that you'll learn new techniques and be inspired when making your own art. So here I am, starting with the sketch for the damned fountain. The fountain is sitting on a pentagram. In hindsight, I think I should have probably put some kind of hedges in the background just to give it a little bit more of a sense of a location, but hindsight is 2020. And I think the hedges might have interfered with the mouths of the seahorses. I'm just starting out with the mouths of the seahorse on the side, trying to figure out what this seahorse is going to look like in the inks. Often I try to find the drawing in the inks themselves. I leave a lot of room for myself to experiment and create within the inks because I feel like if I do that in the pencils or in the sketch even, I'm kind of killing my enthusiasm for the subject that I'm working on. So I prefer to leave a lot of room in the inks for me to create and invent new things for the drawing. I'm just trying to outline everything and figure out how all of these seahorses' bodies are going to interlock to create the fountain. I've sort of figured it out in the sketch, but obviously not totally, since seahorses' bodies are not that tubular like snakes. I did look at some reference online for what seahorses kind of look like, just to get a sense of how they feel visually. But I don't want to draw precisely from reference at all, because I think that also is something that kills my creativity. So if I just get some of the information down and just look at the reference and file it away in my memory and I can draw from it as needed. Seahorses' bodies are kind of segmented and they're also semi-translucent, but this fountain I want to be solid, obviously, and be made of stone or metal. I don't want to make the seahorses be too much like actual seahorses. They have to look like stone or metal renderings of seahorses. By creating this circle for the fountain itself, I'm really able to suggest how high up the camera is away from the fountain. I'm just eyeballing this perspective. I want it to be kind of like a fisheye lens, which I'm indicating with the way the pentagram etching is drawn. I don't like to use ellipses or anything like that, so I'm just eyeballing it, and if it looks good enough, then that's good enough for me. I feel like if I get trapped in using ellipses, I go down this path of perfectionism where everything else then has to be perfect. Everything else then has to be as perfect as every ellipse. And that's not a path I want to go down. I feel like that is a path to madness or creative destruction. Now I'm indicating the surface of the water in the fountain. I just want to give these ripples so it looks like the water is sort of rippling outward from the fountain. I'm going in and lining out the pentagram that's on the ground here surrounding the fountain. I'm sort of figuring out what the light source is when I do this because I want the pentagram to be etched in the ground like it's etched in the stone or something like that. So I have to imagine what the light source is or the direction it's coming from. Right now I'm picturing the light source coming from the top left corner of the picture frame. 
feel like I'm getting a good handle on where all the main elements are going to sit and I don't have to do too many more corrections. Feels pretty good. So I can go in and start adding in detail and the next step will be to add shadows and render all the forms. With the head of the seahorse on the right, I'm realizing that it could overlap the one that's in the background and that kind of gives a sense of spatial relationship between the two. Overlapping is going to be helpful. If I don't overlap them, the fountain will read way flatter. So now that all the forms are in place, I can drop out the, the underlying sketch so it's not confusing me or getting in the way or interfering with how I see the shadows forming. The ridges on the bodies of the seahorses are something that I can add in later with the inks. It's one of the great things about digital inking. The quote unquote inks are super malleable and you can edit on the fly very easily, which is something that you can't do with traditional inks. It's just one of the things that makes digital inking way faster. In theory, you could go back and use whiteout on traditional inks, but it can be just too much of a pain. forgot to add in some of the fins that seahorses have so just going back in and adding those details so I'm just making sure that each of the forms the ridges of these seahorses is the way I want it even though they're not perfect they're going to read pretty well I think I didn't like the spacing on those ridges for this seahorse on the right the ridges on their bodies are actually really helpful for me because they're going to create some very interesting patterns for shadows. I want to make sure that I indicate the ridges wherever I can. That should do it. Now I'm just going to block in the shadows by drawing out the actual shapes of the shadows. Sometimes I do this, I used to do this a lot earlier in my comic book work, like for night business, I would draw out what the shadows shapes were like and then just fill them in with a different thicker pen. I think a lot of cartoonists for comics do this technique when they have a different inker. It's a big time saver since as a penciler you don't have to fill in all of the shadows. You just have to draw the shape and then put an X in them to indicate that this needs to be filled in with all black. I want the majority of the seahorses to be in shadow since the light source is kind of behind them off to the left. That's what's dictating all of my decisions with the shadows. But there's also some reflected light from the water below and whatever other environmental reflection points could be. So I'm putting that in there too. Putting reflected light really adds to the illusion of a three-dimensional shape, but cast shadows obliterate all reflected light, so I put a few in there too. Now I'm going in with the paint bucket in Clip Studio and just filling in the areas that I need to fill in with a few adjustments along the way. The paint bucket tool in Clip Studio is fantastic and it is such an improvement over the paint bucket tool in Photoshop. The paint bucket tool in Photoshop is a serious liability to use. It's basically a useless tool, but in Clip Studio, you can augment the paint bucket tool and there are additional levers that you can pull to change different aspects of the tool itself. And you can really customize how it behaves, which is a huge, huge advantage when you're doing digital inking.
Now I'm just adding some shadows to the fountain base here. And now I'm adding some textures to the etched pentagram. Now I'm figuring out what the cast shadow is going to look like from the fountain itself onto the ground. Going back into the shadows with the pen tool, but this time as an eraser to carve out some reflected light effects. The fountain itself is going to have a reflection in the water as well, so I'm going to map that out here with a big thicker brush and just make some shapes that look like rippling waves. It just has to be an abstract suggestion. It doesn't have to be ideal. Then I'm going to add some reflections from the interior of the fountain base in the water. Those shadows along the inside of the base rim are being reflected in the water, so I want to indicate that reflection. Now I'm adding some variation to the ripples themselves in the water within the base of the fountain, just to give a little bit of variety to the waves and ripple shapes. I'm going to fade out the cast shadow from the fountain on the ground here. I'm just adding some feathering to various details on the fountain, on the seahorses themselves, going through and adding some touch-ups and blending some of the shadows in certain areas. I want the shadows to be pretty harsh, but there are certain things that could use some extra attention. I'm realizing that there needs to be a cast shadow here if I want to make my light source have some logic, so I'm adjusting things there on the fly. Now I'm going in and adding some screen tone gray value to the reflected light here on the seahorse. Creating a hierarchy of shadows here where there's the deepest shadows in the majority of the seahorse forms and then the reflected light as well as some cast shadows are going to be gray tones and then the highlights themselves are the ones that are closest to the light source. I'm adding some screen tone gray value to the water ripples as well since there is a ton of variation of light and shadow in water surfaces. And now for the pentagram that's etched into the ground, I'm adding some gray tones here. I want to give the pentagram a little bit more of a presence with the shadows, just so it's not being too lost or the lines aren't too weak. I want to support them with the gray tones a bit more. Thinking back on it now, I could have made the entire ground gray, had some etched in pure black shadows, and then made some white highlights for the etched pentagram. That might have been a better choice because it would have pushed the fountain up further. Here's the final image. I think it's working for what it needs to do. This is not the most exciting subject for me to draw, but I think that this is a fine image. It's okay. I'm not super crazy about it, but I'm not going to redo it or anything like that. Thanks for watching everyone. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons and check out more videos on my channel like this one. If you have any questions about what I've been working on or anything I mentioned in the video, leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. See you in the next video.